All right, just gonna continue as if I haven't been away for five months. Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. We have a new design tool just released in the July 2024 Fusion update, and that is the Spun Profile tool. I was a little confused at first at what this tool did and whether it was something I would find useful, but after playing around with it a bit, I definitely see its potential. So here's a video showing how I understand it and a practical application. Let's say you have a, uh, we'll call it a key, and you want to model the cut path the key would make as it's revolved around the solid body. Given this problem, let's look at the current way we could accomplish this, and then how the new spun profile tool can greatly speed up this workflow. I'll begin by designing what I'm gonna call the key. We'll start with a sketch on the front plane, and I'll grab a two point rectangle here. So R for rectangle, let's make this uh, 70 millimeters in height by 10 millimeters in width. And then I'm gonna grab my midpoint constraint and constrain that bottom edge to the origin here. All right, next I'm just gonna draw two other rectangles, uh, one placed on the right side and then one on the left side, just slightly below it. Again, not getting crazy with dimensions here just because I want to move quickly through this. So let's finish that sketch, E for extrude. I'm going to select these three profiles. Let's do a symmetric extrusion and we'll do a distance, let's say five millimeters. And there we go. So now we have this shape here. Um, so we've got a bump out on the right, the left side, and I also want to do a bump out coming out the front. So we'll create a sketch on this surface. We're going to project the outline into the sketch. So P for project, select the body here, click OK, and let's untoggle the body, and then we should just have the outline here. I'm, uh, the reason for that projection is now I can reference these lines, create another rectangle there, and I'm gonna simply take that profile and extrude this out five millimeters. Okay, now we have a key with these little bump outs on three different sides. And just stay with me for a minute here because I think the best way to show how useful the spun profile tool is, is to just quickly show a workflow of how we would do this without the tool. So, all right, so we have our key here and let's quickly just make a cylinder here. So I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane, come in with a circle, C for circle, and I'm going to create that circle there. And then let's just extrude this up um, to go over the circle there. We'll do a new body, click OK. And we have our two bodies here. So what I'll do is just name these, I'll call this one key, and body two, we'll just name that our cylinder. All right, we have our two bodies. Now I'm gonna create a section analysis so we can see inside and see what's happening. So inspect section analysis. I'm gonna choose that front plane there and then I'm just gonna click flip so it's facing towards me, okay. And now if I'm looking inside the part here, I have just a solid body with a key there. Let's take off that analysis and this solid cylinder. Okay, now if I take this key and I do a cut from the cylinder, I can go to modify, do a combine, and our operation is cut. Target body would be cylinder, tool body would be key. I'll keep tools, click OK. And if I bring in the section analysis here, I can see what I have there. It's just a straight cut. It's showing if the key was stationary and I just created a cut, this is what I would end up with. I'd have this cut out here showing that left and that right bump out. And if I keep going, I can see that front bump out here that's cut out also. But that's not what I want. What I want it to give me is a cut out if I were to take the key and revolve it around its central axis. So the way we would go about that, let me just delete this last feature here. Um, we can take this key, we would create a profile and then take that and revolve it. So let's, let's just kind of go with that. I'm going to create a sketch here on the center plane there. P for project, select that line of the body. Let's just take that body there and I'm, I need to draw a central axis. So I'm going to draw from the origin straight up. Take that line, make it a center line. And now I can finish this sketch and go to create, revolve select this profile and that would give me that revolve. Now it doesn't let me select this profile here. 
right? Because this isn't attached to this profile with this tool. You can only do one profile here at a time. So I have to do it in separate steps. I'm going to click OK, right click, repeat, revolve. This time select this side, do a join operation. I have that. But you see the other limitation with this as well. I don't have, let me bring this key in, the ability to select this bump out here and revolve it around this sketch. So what I would have to do then is create another profile. So let me create a sketch here um, within this view. So create a sketch. I'll choose that plane there that cuts my model right through the middle. And then P for project, project this, click OK, draw a central axis going straight up. Let me untoggle the body so we can see it more clearly. Select that central line. Um, click to make it a construction line. Finish sketch and now go to create revolve. And let's bring that body, our revolve body into view so we can add to it. Now I can click this profile and do a join. Click OK. And let's just rename this. We'll call it our Revolve Body. Okay, now I have a body that's representative. If I take this key and I were to revolve it around the central axis, I would get this. And I can take this and subtract it from the cylinder now. So modify, combine. The target body is the cylinder. The tool body is the Revolve Body. Click OK. And now if I untoggle both of these bodies, remember I kept the tools there, so that's why these are still here. Um, and if I go to my analysis now, now I get that representative cut by taking this key and revolving it. So if I expand section analysis here, or double click to open it up, I can see if I move this arrow front and back, you can see that that works. But you can see the multiple steps there that had to be taken. I had to create a sketch, project it in, create the profile, a central line, revolve it, do the same thing for the other side, and then rotate it to this view, and then project this side, and then do a revolve with that. And this is a simple design. Think about if I had like multiple arms coming out or branches in different um, orientations, you'd have to do that each time. Okay, a bit of an explanation there, but I felt it was important to show what the normal design procedure would be to get where we're trying to go without the new tool I'm going to show now. Okay, I'm going to take my timeline here and I'm going to bring it back to right after this third extrusion that gave me my cylinder. So here if I bring section analysis, I see that this is st still a solid at this point. So let's go ahead and replace all these additional steps with just one step here. And what I'll do is I'll create a sketch and I'll select the front plane here. And let's bring the key into view. All I need to do now is go to create, down to project include, you'll see a new option called spun profile. We'll choose to select it. It's going to say, what's our geometry? Select my geometry. And then it wants the axis of rotation. If you have a cylindrical body, you can just select on the cylinder. But here, I'm going to select my Z axis here. I'm going to, you can see I can select through it just to make it easier to see. I'll untoggle key. But now I've got that selection here. And you see that we have the projection here in purple. So let me click OK and I'll untoggle the body there. We still have to draw our central axis here. So L4 line, I'll go ahead and connect my origin here to the top point. And then I'm going to select that line and make it a center line. And you see what it did there, and it did it all in one step. So if I bring the model here, our key, the spun profile will automatically figure out that if I take this little bump out here and I revolve it around, this is the profile it's going to make. And it's bringing them all to one side. So it's taking all those other profiles and projecting them all onto one plane to save you the step of creating all these additional sketches and drawing those profiles yourself or projecting them in. Um, so it does that for this top one, does that for this center one, and then also does it for the bottom one. And the neat thing for that bottom one, so this one, if I were to project these other profiles, it would just do it on this side, right? It wouldn't do it to this side. I would have to bring it over or mirror it. 
But the neat thing is that this bump out is completely on a different plane. If I wanted to project it in, I'd have to turn it this side. Um, but it knows to automatically calculate if I take this bump out and revolve it around, this is what it would look like within this profile. So, you know, you can see, and at first I was thrown off. I thought, why is this line here wider than, you know, this edge here? But remember that this is the edge here that when it spins around, this is where it's going to hit. So, it, you know, it's smart enough to know that. Um, so, okay, so you save all those steps. And now all we have to do is finish this sketch, create, revolve in one step. Boom, there it is, our body. So here, let's call this our spun profile. And we have our cylinder here. Again, um, our analysis, if I bring that into view, I haven't created a cut yet because I brought this timeline back. But let's go ahead and do that now. We'll say modify, combine, target body is our cylinder, tool body is our spun profile. Go ahead and keep tools, we'll click OK. And now if I, let's untoggle the spun profile. So we just have just the cylinder and I bring in section analysis. There's what that would look like if I took the key and spun it around. So beautiful thing here is look at all the steps we saved. Okay, so <laughs> I know it's a bit of an explanation, but the first time I saw this explained, it, it was just really went through and I had to kind of figure out like, wait, I, I don't really quite get it. Why is this tool even useful? And so playing around with it, this is sort of an example that I kind of came and worked through myself to to see it. So I thought it was worth it to kind of go through those steps to solidify it in your mind and so you can understand um, why this tool is useful. As always, leave any questions or comments you may have and check out the links I've pasted below to my Fusion courses and a special promotional link to my weekly online live class. I will be back next week. Maybe.